How do you convert liters to moles for a gas? Well, there's two methods. One that applies only under the special conditions of STP, that's standard temperature and pressure, or SATP, standard ambient temperature and pressure. If you are told that you have either of these special conditions, you can use this formula. The molar volume, which is a constant, is equal to the number of liters divided by the number of moles. For STP, that special molar volume constant is 22.4 liters per mole. And for SATP, it's 24.8 liters per mole. You might be given that. You might have to memorize it. I don't know. The point is, there's a shortcut formula if it's special conditions. If it's any other conditions, as in if your teacher didn't tell you it was STP or SATP specifically, you're going to have to use the ideal gas law. That's PV equals NRT. More specifically, because you're being asked to convert to moles in this question, it's more like N equals PV over RT. And by the way, here, if you're solving for moles, you're undoing division by multiplying on that side, and then you've got to undo that multiplication by dividing. So the number of moles here is volume divided by the molar volume constant. Let's keep those in mind as we do three examples. Let's convert 17 liters at STP to moles. Oh, STP, that's a special condition. I can convert it to moles because the number of moles is the volume divided by the molar volume at STP. The volume that I was given, capital V, is 17.0 liters, and I'm going to divide it by the molar volume at STP, 22.4 liters per mole. Well, that calls for a calculator, if you ask me. 17 divided by 22.4 is 0 0.758929 Liters cancel and you're left with moles. Now, for those of you who need significant figures, that's one, two, three significant figures here, one, two, three significant figures there. So I'm gonna round this to one, two, three significant figures for my final answer. There you go, there's the number of moles of gas in 17 liters of gas at STP. Now we're going to do it one more time at SATP, which has a different molar volume constant, but the method is the same. Volume divided by molar volume, 50 liters divided by the new constant, like the one that corresponds to that, which I gave you on the previous piece of paper. This calls for a calculator again. We got your 50 divided by 24.8. I get an answer of 2.016129 moles. And again, with the significant figures, one, two, three, one, two, three, I need three significant figures in my final answer. 2.0, that one's got to get rounded up. So it's 2.02 moles with the sig figs. But... What if you were given other conditions? Then you're going to have to use the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT means that N is PV over RT. That's algebra. You're just dividing the RT out from both sides. Now, you've got to know how to use the ideal gas law to make this work, right? Um... The constant R has a certain unit that your teacher probably likes you to use. Most teachers, I find, do 8.314, and the units on that are liters, kilopascals per mole Kelvin. This tells you what units you need everything else to be in in order for the numbers to cancel out. So, my P needs to be in liters. Oh, it's already in liters, so I could just put it there. 40 
2.3 liters. That's my P. Oh crap, that's my V. Sorry guys. Liters is volume, but that's my volume. So it goes there anyways. My P is in kilopascals. Oh look, this constant has kilopascals in it already, so I can just use it as is. If your constant has like atmospheres or tor or some other pressure unit there, and you were given a different unit, you're going to have to do a side calculation to convert it into the unit corresponding to the R that you were given. It's a lot of work. We can all admit it. And lastly, I need my temperature in Kelvin. This one I actually do have to do a conversion for. How do you convert Celsius to Kelvin? Well, you add 273.15. So that means my Kelvin temperature is 20 plus 273.293.15 Kelvin. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to times those by each other. Then I'm going to divide by both of those. I'm going to be careful to put my denominator in brackets when I do that math. You got your 42.3 times your 80 and divided by both of, note that I'm using the brackets here, 8.314 times 293.15, end bracket. The brackets are needed so that you're dividing by both of those and not accidentally only dividing by that, then timesing by something. All right, I got a number. Um, my number is 1.3884561. Now, the units are moles because that says moles, but I also want to show you that liters cancels, kilopascals cancels, Kelvin cancels, and you're left by with moles as an actual unit here. Cool. And then lastly, we need to worry about significant figures. Um, this 20 here only had two significant figures with it. But when we added 273, it became three significant figures. This is four, that's three, that's three. So we need three significant figures in this final answer. That means it's one, two, this is my third figure. It gets rounded up from eight to nine. That's 1.39 moles. Great. That was a lot of pedantic stuff just to emphasize what's going on. To convert from liters to moles, you either need to use this formula if you have special conditions like STP or SATP, or if you're given any other conditions, it's the ideal gas law, but rearranged. Cool? Cool. Thanks for being with me. Best of luck.